For second grade small group this week, the two things you're going to focus on are a very basic telling time review and then adding and subtracting. For our telling time review, you've got a stack of clocks and just having a student um, grab a, a clock from the pile and tell you what it is. That's two o'clock. Next person's turn. Three o'clock. Next person's turn. One o'clock. After they've all gotten a turn or two until you run out of clocks, it's kind of your um, decision. You could even have them up, uh, upside down so that they don't get the sneak peek. Then have a clock in front of each student and count by fives around the clock. So enforce before they start counting. How many minutes are in an hour? 60. How many? 60. All right, let's start at the top. Let's start at the 12. That's where we always start. We're going to count by fives around the clock because every time you get to a new large number on the clock, that's really five minutes. So we would go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. It's a new hour. The other thing to review with them over and over, which one is the long hand, hour or minute? That is the minute hand. Which one is the short hand, hour hand? Wherever the short hand, the hour hand is pointing, that is the hour. So since the short hand is pointing at the three, this is three. And whenever it's up at the 12, that is o'clock. So just talking through that vocabulary as much as you can. Spend maybe no more than about three or four minutes on that each day. Then each student is going to have a packet that looks like this, um, and it's just got a bunch of different addition questions for them. And just like last week, I want there to be a very intense focus on stacking and solving, really meticulous, neat handwriting and careful with their grouping. And then the new piece this week is we're going to check it using subtraction on a number line. So if this is the case, 67 plus 29, Make sure I've got it all lined up, neat, legible, and I put it in the first box. Okay, what's seven plus nine? Nine's bigger, so I would start at nine, seven more, 16. Write my 16 off to the side. What digit will need to be in the ones place? The six, and I'll need to carry that 10. Now, six plus one plus two. Six plus one is seven, eight, nine. So I got 96 for my sum. The next thing that I have to do is to be able to check this using subtraction. So what I'll do is I'll draw my number line and I want to use my sum is my largest number because I added. So I'm going to put that at the far end of the number line and then I may choose either add end that I want to put. So let's say I choose to put 29 on my number line, then it would go way at this end. And again, be really careful with them to make sure that they've done a good job of being nice and neat, that their numbers are at both ends. Then what we talk through is, okay, here's my 29. What's the next benchmark number? 30. Okay. Before 96, what would be the benchmark number? 90. Now that we've labeled all of those, we're ready to start our hopping, our counting. So to go from 29 to 30, well, that's just one. Oh, now I need to go by tens because I'm going benchmark to benchmark. All right, let's see what we do. So 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. That was a lot. So that was 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Some of them will need to label this way and some of them will not. Um, one thing I found is if their, their number up here on top doesn't make sense, then I start having them, okay, if this was 30, then what's next? 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Preferably not having them do this because it's a lot to stay organized with, but if they are having trouble with how many is that hop, the more concrete we could go, the better. Some kids are going to be able to go 30 to 90 and just go 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Oh, that's 60. Next, we need to go from 90 to 96. That is six. After I'm done with my hops, I put my ones together. One plus six is seven, and my tens together. I have 60. 
7 plus 60 is just 67. Does it match the other add end? It does, so I know I'm correct. That's the whole point is we want that connection between the addition and the subtraction number line. I'm going to go through one more just to, just to talk through it um, and give a little more verbiage in response to what they might do. Um, here, 170 plus 26, this is a trickier stack because they don't always put their tens with the tens and ones with the ones. Zero plus six is just six. Seven plus two is nine. One plus nothing is one. So I have 196, so I am ready to check. So on my number line, I will put my sum, 196, and I can choose either add end. I could choose to go from, one, or from 26 to 96, or I could go 170 to 96. I'm going to choose the harder one just because they might, and it's okay. Either one is fine. So let's go 26. So what's the next benchmark number? The next benchmark number is 30. Okay, what was the benchmark number before 196? If we're looking at tens, it would have been 190. Okay, so now we're ready to hop. To go from 26 to 30, that's 4. To go from 90 to 96, or 190 to 196, that was just six. And then we've got all of this in the middle to do. And this is a lot. So we've got 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I might even mark that, 100. So that was 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. I'm going to do that so I don't lose track. Now I need to go from 100 to 190. Well, I might be able to just see that that's 90. Depends on the kid. Maybe they'll be able to see it. Maybe they won't. This part is going to be a little trickier than the last time. 4 plus 6 is 10. Okay, now 70 plus 90. Well, 7 plus 9 is... 16, and I'm going to add that zero at the end. So 160 plus 10 is 170. It matches my other add end. One last one. I know this is a long video, but it's for the entire week. Let's just look at this one. 74 plus 17. 4 plus 7, that is 11. Write it off to the side if I still need to. Some of them might need to not need to do that anymore. One goes in the one place. I carry that 10. 7 plus 1 is 8 plus 1 is 9. I got 91. Now I'm going to label my number line subtraction to check. So I need my sum is the highest number. And then I can choose either 74 or 17 to plot. This time I'm going to go with 74. It would be wise to go with the larger add end, but they might not, and that's okay. Um, so to go from 74, well, my next benchmark number would be 80. 91, the benchmark number before that would just be 90. To go from 74 to 80, well, that's 6. To go from 80 to 90, well, that's just a 10. And to go from 90 to 91, that's just a 1. Gather my 1s together, 6 plus 1 is 7, and 10, that will equal 17. Does it match the other add-in? Yes, it sure does. That's how I know I did it right. So that's it for this week. Go as slow as you absolutely need to. Even if one of these questions takes more than one class period, that's okay. We want them to be able to do both and see the connection. And they're going to have to be nice and neat and go slow to really get it. You might also have different kids working on different questions, or you might all be on the same one. Whatever makes the most sense to you, but do not feel rushed. Um, this connection for the two different ways to see that addition and subtraction and how they go together is the goal for this week. Thank you so, so much. Have fun teaching.